Okay, um, in this demonstration I'm going to show you how to use uh, dynamic groups in Azure AD um, pulled from um, extension attributes in Active Directory um, to, to filter uh, group membership across to um, Zscaler Zero Trust Exchange and then how to use these attributes um, programmatically to control um, role-based access control for an administrator. So um, I'm going to demonstrate with three different users. There's myself, um, a user, uh, and I'm an administrator as well. I've got some attributes, um, and you'll see here I've got um, some extension attributes, ext1, ext2, ext3. Um, I've also got a, another user here using my daughter as an example. Um, she has uh, these other attributes, A1, A2, A3. Um, and then I've got a third user um, who then has um, some similar attributes, uh, R1, R2, R3. Okay, so I mean, these could be any attribute that you might assign to a user in an organization, such as their company code, their cost center, things that are more attributable than a, than a, than a basic, uh, um, um, let's say, department um, attribute that, um, that might be assigned um, in the profile. Um, which is, which is free form and therefore uh, is prone to error. So these extension attributes can be a bit more programmatic and as long as they mean something to your organization, they'll flow through into Azure and then we can use those um, in Azure or, or whatever your IDP is for some kind of programmatic access. So if we take a look here in my group membership, um, I've got some dynamic groups here, AR, ext referencing those uh, those attributes so dynamic uh, a um, membership rule says uh, if the extension attribute um, is a1 and it's a2 then you're in this group and the same for the other the other groups so if we if we go into these and we um, look at these it'll say uh, total member uh, here is one and we can see the members of this dynamic group is Kira uh, because she had those a1 and a2 attributes. Um, the same is true for dynamic R, um, has the uh, member Adele because she has those R1 and R2 attributes um, and EXT, uh, again dynamic membership rule says equals EXT1, EXT2, those attributes are true, um, then uh, Mark is a member of that group. So, so we can get those groups across um, and then when we look at, um, sorry, if we come back over here and we go to my enterprise applications, um, if I look at uh, my ZIA um, application, um, it's going to go ahead and uh, on the provisioning side, um, we're going to look at uh, attribute mappings. We're going to send across uh, the group memberships, uh, provided the group contains the word Zscaler, the group contains the word Internet, or they are dynamic groups, uh, the group contains the word uh, dynamic, which is what we, we called them. Um, and if we come across into the admin portal here and we take a look at um, the users, we can see that uh, these users are in dynamic A, dynamic EXT, uh, and dynamic R. So we're, we're sending across those groups because they contain the word dynamic, the users are in those groups because of those extensions, and that's all fine. Um, the other thing that's interesting is we want to send across the department field. And so what we've done with the department field, if we um, take a look at my provisioning here, attribute mappings, mappings, uh, the user mapping, um, We've said, okay, we want to send across the department attribute, um, but we're going to do this programmatically. And, and what we've done here, if we take a look at the expression builder, um, just to, to build this out a little bit, um, we're saying uh, basically repeating what that dynamic group membership is, but we're using it to make a decision as to what department we're going to send. 
So if the department contains EXT1 and EXT2, we're going to say, okay, you're in UK uh, marketing. Um, uh, if the attribute says A1 or A2, uh, oh, sorry, I should have said yeah, UK sales. UK sales, if it's uh, EXT1 and EXT2, we'll say UK sales. If it's A1 or A2, we're in FR sales. Um, and if it's uh, R1 or R2, we're going to send SE sales. And we can merge all these together. We can create any amount of uh, rules in this to, to make a decision as to what attributes are sent across programmatically. Um, so if we come back here, we're saying okay, it's an expression. Um, and if none of those are true, we're going to say no country or department and come across and it's going to provision it across um, to uh, ZIA using that. And, and we've done the same with um, the ZPA uh, provisioning as well. So now I can say, OK, the, these users uh, are federated across. We're doing a skim sync. We know that the users are in certain groups. Um, and we know that the users are now in these specific um, departments, which are not pulled from an attribute directly. They're not in the department SE sales. We saw that was blank. But what we are saying is the user is in SE sales because it had those couple of attributes uh, assigned to, um, to the person document. And, and then we made that decision um, to send that across programmatically. Okay, so what else have we got going on? Well, so I've got some uh, role management and I created a, a department uh, admin role. And the department admin role says um, they've got limited access. They can manage the URL filtering policy and they can manage the firewall filtering policy. They can't see usernames um, in the logs or anything like that. Um, and this user is an admin rank three. And so an admin rank three they cannot override policies with a with a with a user with a higher rank. Um, so, uh, uh, admin rank seven is the highest. Uh, admin with rank three can write rules that override admins of zero, one, uh, two. Uh, I think I got that right. Admins with a lower rank. Oh, I got it the other way around. Admins with a lower rank cannot override policies created with admins with a higher rank. Sorry. So, uh, an admin with a rank three cannot override a policy with rank seven. So if we take a, 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 a look at the policy here, uh, let's take a URL filtering policy. Uh, these are all admin rank zeros, um, and these are admin rank seven. So, so when we insert rules, uh, we can't override ones written with a higher rank. Okay. So we've got those uh, policies and the admins, and then I can create my administrators. Um, and I create these users as administrators as well, Adele, Kira, Mark. Um, and what we've said is that uh, Mark is an admin. He can only write policy focused for this department, uh, where the department is UK sales. Okay, so it matches the department that user is actually in. But remember that the, a user and admin are, are slightly different constructs in this. Um, the same for uh, Kira and the same for Adele, S E F R. Okay, and so if we come over to my enterprise applications again, um, let's go back here. I also have uh, admin SSO enabled for ZIA. Um, and uh, admin SSO enabled for Zscaler private access. So what does this actually look like? Um, and so what we'll do um, is we'll create a private window and we'll go to myapps.microsoft.com. Ask me to sign in. So uh, we'll start off with uh, kryan and uh, wellsgeek.net. sign in and we can see um, uh, Zscaler Internet Access Administrator uh, in my my app so we do a, a IDP initiated sign on into Zscaler Internet Access
And so I single sign on in. Now instantly I've got that, uh, that role-based policy applied to me. I can't see device and username uh, information. I'm limited by what I can see in my administrator controls here, but I'm specifically interested in um, the URL filtering control. So I want to uh, create a rule. I'm restricted, I can't see some of the advanced settings or anything, um, but I can see the rules that exist there and who's got access uh, to what, what, what rules are already configured. Um, so I have a full view, but if I want to add a rule, you'll see here I can, I can add the rules in 9, 10, 11, or 12, uh, but I can't add the rule any higher. So I can't override the rules of admin rank zero, but I can insert it at 9, 10, 11, or 12 and override the rules of a higher rank or, or the way the admin rank is higher. So I could override those. So I can go ahead and I can say, well, let's put this in uh, at rule number nine um, and as an admin, I'm rule number. Th I'm an admin of rank three, so I'm going to make a decision. Do I want other admins of rank three to be able to override it, or do I want to say I want to write this at, uh, at level seven, and then only administrators with level seven can override it as well? Um, but let's uh, let's let's call this. Uh, uh, let's take a look. Um, so my department, I can only select department FR sales in this rule so I'm restricted as to what I can uh, apply policy on I'm also restricted by the users so if I wanted to select it for users it would only apply for users that are in that department as well I've got group based membership in here as well so I can say uh, any of those dynamic groups for example in there for my policy so these are all together so if the user is this user or they're in this group or they're in this uh, department then uh, this rule will apply and we'd say um, let's just select adult material it's the top of the list uh, and we'll say um, the uh, action uh, is to block that traffic um, and of course uh, this will get inserted in at uh, rule number nine um, so my global rules all the ones that zero will apply first which hopefully would would already block uh, adult material and all that kind of stuff um, but I've just uh, inserted this one in and it's going to apply specifically to these users in this department um, uh, and, uh, and apply there so I can go ahead and uh, and activate that um, if we if we log out in fact what we'll do is we'll just close the browser down open a new private tab and go to myapps.microsoft.com at this point, we'll log in as a Ryan. There we go. So they're logging into uh, ZIA as well now. And uh, we can now create a, our own policy in here as well. Add a rule. And this user um, can only select SE. Uh, my Sweden sales, uh, they can only select, uh, they can select those groups. Uh, and of course, they're restricted by those users that are a member of that uh, SE department. So we're, we're again, we're restricting what they've got access to. Um, and we'll uh, caution on, on those users. Uh, and I forgot to fill something in. I should have paid attention to the error. Oh, uh, what we'll do is we'll allow these users access to category um, internet communication. So you can see that the, the admin rank um, 
and the role-based access control can flow through from the department information we consume um, and we can means that we can get uh, many users into the into the tenant um, filter the users based on department attribute um, and then enable an administrator to write policy specifically for their department with delegated role-based administration. Uh, hope this is useful. Mark at zscaler.com.